Uh, let me now introduce a very special guest, um, co-founder of high school uh, basketball media platform, Strictly B-Ball, Joe Dor. How are we doing today? Doing pretty good, Tony. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, I guess we'll just kind of start with uh, Strictly B-Ball. Uh, for, I guess, those who don't know, you guys uh, have been killing it on all social media platforms, up to 1.7 million on TikTok. Uh, plenty of followers everywhere else. Uh, I guess, how did you come up with the idea to start uh, doing this? And uh, where did it come from, I guess? Yeah, um, it kind of goes back a number of years. So uh, I started it and I, I run it with my friend Nolan. Um, we, we grew up in the same neighborhood and we always kind of shared the interest of basketball, number one, and also social media. Um, so those kind of interests... We explored it like early on. Actually, the first uh, platform that we we tried out was Vine uh, back in like 2013, 2014. We just make like basketball highlight, quick highlight clips, put some music over it. Um, but then over the years, we always kind of explored different things. Uh, Nolan ran a Instagram account called Strictly B Ball um, when we were in high school, and that he's kind of the name kind of came from just like seeing what was available and he thought that worked pretty well and, and it did. And then um, right around uh, it was February of 2020, obviously TikTok is, is growing and we saw that as an opportunity. So we made um, a TikTok account called Strictly B-Ball and started posting um, like different, we started as like more of an NBA account. We would, we would do like rankings and um, like grading uh, different things and actually the first series that like we did these series and the first one that really went viral was um, grading every number one overall pick since 2000 so we'd go through grade like four of them per video and and people would follow along to see all the the different parts um, but then so we we gained a following through through doing that and then um, the NBA kind of content started to become a little more saturated on there um, a lot of people were doing it and we kind of ran out of ideas and so we honestly i would say like near the end of 2020 we didn't really gain any followers for like three or four or five months um and we were like we got to switch things up um and that's when it was beginning of 2021 right at the tail end of, of chet holmgren's senior year of high school we went out to one of his games filmed it on our phones and then did like a voiceover over it and it absolutely blew up it was the biggest video on our on our page up until that point um and then we were like all right what's well, it's time to see what we can do in high school basketball and then yeah the rest is just kind of been focusing on high school basketball since then yeah uh so you guys obviously now go to like a bunch of different tournaments and a bunch of different games is it just is it just you and uh just you two on the team or do you guys have anyone else helping you out it's it's basically just us two um, running it uh, full time. I guess it's just us two. But we we sometimes recently have tried um, reaching out to people in different cities to film games for us, which actually is not too hard just because we film all of our games on our phones. So you don't need too much of an experience. So if you're in a city that's got um, a big name player, um, anything like that, we 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 oftentimes will reach out. But yeah, it's just us two doing the day to day. Um, traveling it's just us two um, but actually we, we just started our strictly football page um, which we're going to explore a little bit we're experimenting with that because um, we think there's an opportunity high school football is I think undercovered um, so we're, we're doing that right now with one of our friends named Layton who we went to high school with uh, but yeah basically it's just just Nolan and I yeah I, I mean I agree with that definitely in Minnesota, uh, kind of when you and I have grown up, uh, basketball's just taken off with so many different uh, big name guys, and uh, football's kind of been on the wayside. There, there's obviously been a few different uh, recruits here and there, but uh, I, I definitely think there'd be a place to uh, see more coverage there. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, in the in the summer of this year, one of the times that I guess I was kind of introduced to your guys' page, I, I try to spend uh, as little time on TikTok as possible because I just get sucked into there. But uh, was the Twin Cities Pro Am, and uh, you guys had a team there. Um, I guess how was that kind of whole experience for you? Um, I know there were uh, 
former Gopher uh, Sean Sutherland was on the team, a few other uh, big-name high school guys from Minnesota. How was that whole process for you? The Pro-Am was, like, probably the most fun thing we ever did. Like, it was it was a blast. Um, it kind of came together just because I – I grew up going, or I guess they've, they've been doing it since like 2015, I think maybe, but I would always go to the Pro-Am um, what, back when it was at DLSL High School. Um, so I was always a big fan of it. But then, you know, we saw it as an opportunity for for content too. And it was just something that would, we thought would be super fun. So we were lucky enough that one of the past sponsors had dropped out and we were, you know, pushing hard to, to have a team and it worked out. And yeah, it was super fun. Like you said, Sean, um, was kind of the first guy we had. We knew we were going to have him just because we went to high school with him. Um, and then he kind of helped us get some other guys. Um, so, yeah, it was it was super fun. Uh, it was super competitive. We we really wanted to win it all, but Team Tyus was just a little too dominant. Um, and we ended up – our season ended when we were going up against Nate Knight um, and Josh Minot. And we, we almost won that game. Um, but, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, when uh, Team Tyus rolled out with Isaac Haas, I knew that was going to be uh, tough to match up with him in a Pro-Am tournament. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, a lot of my fans are uh, Gophers fans, and uh, not many more people connected with uh, Minnesota high school basketball like you are. Um, I guess in the last two years since uh, Ben Johnson's taken over with the Gophers, when – when you've, I guess, communicated with uh, other recruits and players in high school, uh, I guess from your opinion, kind of where is uh, the Gophers program on like a respect level and kind of intrigue to other uh, players in high school right now? I mean, from from conversations I have, and I'm, I'm guessing you would agree, it's I think people really love Ben Johnson. I think people really appreciate that it's, it's finally someone at the at the top that went to high school in Minnesota, went to the U of M, and now he's he's the head coach. He was obviously an assistant here before he took a break, but I think people really really respect Ben Johnson. Um, I mean, personally, I I feel I feel good about having him as a coach. I think um, I think he's going to do a, a lot better job recruiting Minnesota. Obviously, we have three freshmen from the state right now um and going forward I think that's going to be similar um but yeah I, I I'm excited about it obviously it's we're not a good team right now um but obviously we have four freshmen playing big minutes we got injuries um uh, and I, I think I respect the fact that he kind of had to but he's starting from scratch he's going to build from the bottom up and hopefully a few years from now we have three straight classes of a few Minnesota guys obviously we we got some other big names like Dennis Evans Cam Christie, those are going to be those are going to be big time recruits as well. But overall, yeah, I think he's he's definitely well respected. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think people just need to be patient, and uh, I I think he's kind of shown already why um he did get hired. He's well connected with Minnesota, obviously, and I think it's going to pay off in the long run. And I think Gophers fans just need to see that vision. Uh, but you mentioned uh Dennis Evans, obviously. Uh, one of the biggest recruits in Minnesota basketball history, um, a guy that uh, you've seen play in person before. I've not. I guess what uh, kind of have you seen fr from his game, and how would you explain um, his game to someone who's never seen him play before? He's a very intriguing player. Um, honestly, I would say right now he's probably the most, like, in terms of evaluating him, he's probably the most polarizing high school player in the country right now. I know um, Rivals.com has him like 11th. I think ESPN has him like in the 80s maybe. So it's all over the place. And yeah. I think that's mainly because he didn't really get a high major offer until I think we offered him in like May. So it hasn't even been a full year since high major teams have really been on him. So it's he's a late, late bloomer. I think even just a couple of years ago, he was just like awful at basketball. Um, but yeah, he's he's putting it together, which I think makes it even more intriguing because like his upside is is huge because he he's comfortable taking the three. I don't think he's gonna knock it down at a super consistent rate right now, but he's comfortable taking the three ball. Um, but obviously it, it comes down to the fact that I think he's the best shot blocker in high school basketball right now. 
I think he's a super, not just because he's seven one with a seven five wingspan, but like he's a talented shot blocker. He's got a feel for it. Um, but I do think, so yeah, I, I think he's going to be really good, but I do think there's going to be some growing pains when it comes to playing in the big 10. Um, just cause I mean, he played, he played, uh, he was on the roster for the FIBA U17 team and didn't get a lot of minutes just cause I think he, he hasn't played against a lot of competition like that. He didn't play EYBL basketball. He didn't play any on, on the sponsored AU circuit, but obviously the talent, and the potential is undeniable. So it, it's going to be, regardless of the outcome, it's going to be fun. But I, I'm I'm high on just the simple fact that he's going to be a great shot blocker. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something that uh, definitely when watching uh, guys like Chet Holmgren, um, that's what I noticed the most uh, when watching him. And I think that's a skill that just translates to any level because it's so much more about – uh, timing and like feel for uh, defense and uh, anticipating more than um, like physical skills sometimes. And I, I think that's something that's going to translate to any level. And a guy like Dennis Evans and a program like Minnesota, when he is so polarizing and he's such a, I guess, quick rising prospect that he wasn't recruited when he was in, uh, when he was an underclassman in high school. I, those are the players that I think, can take the Gophers program to the next level because it's like, it's a high risk, high reward player. And I mean, it might even be low risk because he has a skill that'll translate to the big 10, but I guess kind of looking to their uh, other recruit now, Cam Christie, um, a guy I'm assuming you've seen play a few times. Um, he's obviously a brother of uh, Max Chris Christie now in the NBA. Um, what have you kind of seen from his game and how, how would you uh, describe how, how he plays? I've actually – I've only um, seen him play one time. But I I would say that I, I think he's going to be – he's going to be a really good player. I mean, he's a smooth player. His brother, obviously, yeah, like you said, in the NBA. Um, I would say they have a little bit of different games, but he's just a smooth, smooth scorer. Um, going to compete really hard. Those are the two things I think that uh, come to mind first. But I think he's going to be – uh, a really, really good player. Um, he probably might even be the better player right away um, when compared to Dennis Evans. He might be a little bit more ready right away. But, yeah, I think I'm I'm really excited about that that one-two punch right there, that recruiting class. Um, obviously, both both not Minnesota guys, but, um, yeah, those are some, some big-time pickups uh, going forward. Yeah, I, I mean, they might bring back uh, their whole team next year, minus maybe Toro Samuels, uh, if everything goes to plan. And adding those two guys, I think uh, the program's definitely trending in the right direction. And I, I think uh, adding those two guys will only help it. Um, kind of, I guess, when you look across Minnesota now specifically, uh, there's a few top guys that remain, I guess, unsigned um, as juniors with uh, Daniel Freetag, a, a guy I know – uh, played on your pro am team, uh, Isaac Asuma, Cash Chavis. Um, I guess where do you kind of see the uh top players in Minnesota, and um, how how would you, I guess, rank those guys, and uh, where do you um? I know I I won't uh ask you to say where you think they're gonna end up or anything because that that's up to them. But um, I, I, how do you kind of feel where like the landscape is right now with the unsigned guys? I think um, Isaac Asuma and and Daniel are both really, really, really good. Um, and I think after that, um, there's there's some other really talented guys. Um, Jackson McAndrew uh, is is really good. Um, and Cash, yeah, Cash is on our pro M team, and he's leading a a Park Center team that is pretty much unbeatable right now. Um, so I'd I'd say that that class is pretty good. But, yeah, I think Isaac and Daniel at the top, those two guys are going to be really, really good college basketball players. Um, Daniel, who knows, might even play football. Um, but, yeah, those those guys are, are – I'm really high on both of those guys. Yeah, I, I, Daniel's just a, a special, special athlete. I, I talked to him over the summer, and at that point he uh, obviously hadn't played a year of high school football yet because I think he got hurt the year before. Yeah, And, I mean, now uh, I think he has offered for Notre Dame for football, which is just crazy. But, uh, 
Yeah, the Notre Dame offer, I mean, that's got to have him thinking that that he might consider playing football. But, you know, who knows? He He's still considering every option. But that Notre Dame football offer, that's, <laughs> that is crazy, especially he's only played one one year of real high school football, and his team was not very good. I mean, I, I was at one game um, where, I mean, he's a wide receiver on offense normally, um, but his quarterback wasn't really getting him the ball, and they just put him at QB. And he broke off two 60 yard touchdown runs in that nice. game playing QB. Never no experience playing playing that position. So yeah, obviously he's an incredible athlete. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he does. But he is he's gonna be playing on our pro am team again this summer. So that'll be fun. He he competes in that league. Um he got one bucket against Tyus and we recorded it and he was just he was super excited about that. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a super nice guy. And uh I I I mean, I I assume only uh, great things will come from him because I think he's he's about all the all the right things and just an incredible athlete overall. Um, but I I guess kind of putting you on the spot here when you look at uh Minnesota high school basketball as a whole past few years it's been uh, it continues to grow and it's really one of the top I guess circuits in the country. Um, if you had to construct a starting five, I guess since in your lifetime, uh, and let's say the last eight years, I guess, since you've been really following it. Yeah. Um, who, who would be your starting five with just Minnesota guys? That is a tough question. <laughs> um, am I taking their high school, their high school, like what they were in high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do okay. that. <laughs> Tyus has to be in there. Um, I would have to put between Jalen and Trey Jones. I would, I think I would have to go. Okay, so Ty is for sure. I'm gonna go Jalen, um, Chet. That's three. Who else? Who else am I missing? You got guys like I mean, Turu in there too. Yeah, Turu. I would even say like going back a number of years, Reed Travis. Oh yeah. Yep. I think Reed Travis and Chet Holmgren would be a pretty dominant front court. <laughs> um, got the Hurt brothers. I, too. Yeah, the Hurt brothers. Who's like a good – maybe David Roddy, although he wasn't as, like, highly recruited in high school. But, I mean, look what he turned out to be. There's a number of ways you could go, but I'll give you – I'll give you Tyus, Jalen Suggs, David Roddy, Reed Travis, and and Chet. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, kind of I, – I guess growing up, like, I think the first uh, state – like, I went to the state tournament probably when I was in – uh, sixth or seventh grade, I remember for the first time, and uh, I think uh, there was Amir Coffee was playing. I remember. Oh yeah, uh, gotta, gotta put Amir Coffee in there. I put yeah. Amir Coffee in there at the three. Yeah, <laughs> and, there's just yeah. so many guys the last few years. It's just been crazy. Because I I remember the first the first state uh, tournament I went to it was like there was there was like one at least one like big name high major guy in like each game. And I, I, w- I just went there with my dad, and I'm like, oh, this is crazy. And then I, I just got so, like, into it the next – throughout high school, just going to a bunch of uh, regular season games and stuff. Like, I remember one of the craziest games I went to it was uh, Maple Grove versus Champlin when Maple Grove had uh, Brad Davison. Yeah. Uh, Reed McKinley Nico. McKinley Wright. Yeah. And then uh, Theo John McKinley Wright. It, it just – it's just been crazy the past few years. It, it's just high-level basketball. And uh, I, I mean, it's exciting to see Minnesota on such a stage, especially then when you get guys like Jalen Suggs and Chet now in the NBA as uh, top three draft picks. It, it's just a great, great time to uh, follow Minnesota basketball. Yeah, it, it it has been just looking back on those names. It's been unreal. Um, yeah, McKinley Wright, he was he was so good. Yeah, it's it's always fun, and I think there's gonna be a there's gonna be more guys that we look back on like that that are currently playing, um, similar to those those guys we mentioned. Yeah, are there any I guess under the radar guys, maybe underclassmen that you think um will break through in the next few years? Because I know we mentioned the junior class, but are there any other guys? Yeah, I mean, I would say maybe not under the radar, but just because he's a freshman, people might not know about him yet. But Jaden Moore from Hopkins, yeah. I think he's going to be a five star. I think he's going to be a five star player. Um, yeah, he's he is a he's unreal. I mean, he had one game where 
he had like a triple double with like seven steals. Like he almost got a quadruple double. Hopkins, wow. um, I mean, they've lost a few games recently, but Hopkins was like at one point ranked number three in the state. At the, I mean, I'm, of course, they're 4A, number three in the state, and he's by far their best player, and he's a freshman. So that's going to be like – he's going to be the next um, – I don't want to put a label on it, but like he, he's the next Hopkins star. Absolutely. Yeah. He made him more. is going to be unreal. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, Minnesota Minnesota has had such a run of really good guards with starting with Tyus, Trey, Jalen Suggs, Trayvon Holloman. Uh, there's, it just seems like every every year there's a new guy coming up, like a freshman like that. Uh, like I remember hearing the same thing about uh, Trey Holloman when he was at Minneapolis North and then transferred to Creighton Durham Hall. Yep. Um, but, I, I mean, it's it's just an exciting time. Yeah. Um, I, I, you're wearing a Timberwolves hat. I know uh, a lot of my fans are Gophers fans, but they're all Minnesota sports fans. Um, the, the Timberwolves have been – they're heating up, I guess, in 2023. Um, I, w- what are your thoughts on the season, on, on the ceiling of this team? Uh, do you think they need to make any moves at the deadline? Um, I, I guess if you were if you were the GM of the team, what would you be doing? Um, I mean, I guess I'll start with my uh, my thoughts. The hardest thing is to just put the Gobert trade in in the past because I think if I was the GM, I think the Tim Connolly, if he could reverse the trade, he would. Um, but that doesn't mean that our future is completely a disaster. So I that's got to put that in the past. I think there's still potential we can be good um, with the current roster that we have. Um, so I'm excited. I was at the game – two days ago when they beat the Warriors and that was electric. I think, I mean, Anthony Edwards, he didn't have the best game that night, but he's obviously making the leap right now that people thought he was going to make at the beginning of the season. So that's always exciting. Um, but if I was the GM, this, this deadline, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade D'Lo obviously number one. I don't, I, I don't even know how much we could get for him. I personally would not trade Nas Reed. I know that's another name that keeps getting brought up. I think he's so good. Yeah. And if we if we trade Nasreed, next thing you know, he's it's gonna be another case of he's gonna be a starter on some team eventually, and he's gonna be an all-star player. Like yeah. that's just inevitable. He's gonna be an all-star player if we trade him. Um I think we could use like maybe another like perimeter defender. Um can't have enough of those guys. I don't know who that might be. I mean, I know Matisse Thibel is on the is on the trade block. Um, I know everyone's bringing up Bones Highland, which I love. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not because we really need like. Although I, we could use a bench score. I mean, Jalen Noel has not been uh, what we want him to be this year, obviously. Uh, but I love Bones Highland. I loved him coming out of college. He's got a great story. Um, so that would be really fun because I know I don't think he's going to be on Denver past the deadline. So we'll see who gets him, but not too many big moves. I think just we still haven't seen what we have because I think the first fifteen games of the year were bad. But let's get Cat healthy and see what we really have. I don't know. Yeah, I I think they got one of the best records in the NBA over the last or oh, since twenty twenty three. I think. Yeah, uh, I think we're twelve and five. Yeah, I Minnesota fans reacted obviously so quickly to the start of the year and. And the NBA, especially when there's so many moving parts like that, it, it doesn't take – it takes until, like, after the All-Star break to get uh, really, I guess, locked in with chemistry. Uh, it's tough with all the injuries, but I, I, I think they'll be fine come playoff time. Yeah, look at Boston last year. They were 500 at the new year. We were around 500 at the new year this year. And actually, we were around 500 uh, – I think somebody – it was a couple – maybe last week they compared last year's team to this year's team. Very similar record at the same time. Um, in December, we were like below 500, and then we started putting things together. There's the NBA is a long season. I think that's the, that's the important thing to realize. Not every time you lose, it's the end of the world, and not every time you win, it means that the Wolves are back. Yeah. Um. So it's tough to it's tough to not overreact when you lose to the Pistons two times in a week, but uh, it's a long season. Yeah, uh, I guess last question I'll get you out on here. Uh, since uh, you've obviously kind of blown up on social media and stuff, you've had a lot of 
I guess, cool opportunities. Um, if it's uh, going to a big high school game, go to the NBA draft or something. What's, I guess, uh, one opportunity that you've had that you're like, well, like, this is really cool. Like, I didn't think uh, our TikTok account would take us here. Honestly, I think, like, you mentioned it. I think the, the one time I was like, whoa, like, I'm actually here right now was the NBA draft. Um, we went, we went, um, to Brooklyn and we got to like stay in a, or we got to watch the draft in a suite with like other creators. Um, one of them was Mike Corzemba, who I like, always grew up watching. Yeah. And it was so like surreal to just be like chopping it up with Mike Corzemba talking about the NBA draft. Um, cause the NBA draft has always been like my favorite part of the NBA. Um, cause I think I tell people it's cause the wolves have always been so bad. That the NBA draft is the only thing that we always had to look forward to. Yeah. So literally the NBA draft, I look forward to the draft more than I look forward to the NBA finals, um, which is probably pretty crazy. But the NBA draft was probably the, the number one where I was like, wow, this is this is wild. Yeah. I, I, I You you said oh, kind of, I guess, my same thoughts as a kid. Uh, I love the draft, too, and it's kind of for the same reason. So. Uh, definitely interesting how that works out. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. I guess best of luck the rest of the way with uh, Strictly B Ball and wh whatever I guess you end up doing in the future. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on. I always like talking Minnesota basketball. Awesome.